Matthew 21, 1 through 3. And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem, and were come to Bethphage, unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway ye shall find an ass tied, and a coat with her. Loose them, and bring them unto me. And if any man say all unto you, ye shall say, The Lord hath need of them, and straightway he will send them. And if any man say all unto you, ye shall say, The Lord hath need of them, and straightway he will send them. The Lord hath need of thee. I believe without much persuasion, we understand tonight that there's a great work to be done in this end time. Uh, God has a tremendous work for his church. And he's not calling any bench warmers. He has a great work. If you're here tonight, you're saved, then you're a part of this final operation of God. I heard it once said that 80% of the work of the church is done by 20% of the people. Well, if we're to be an end time New Testament congregation, that can't be the case. Because the level of glory that God is expecting from his remnant is going to require all hands on deck. We want to encourage, we want to have an atmosphere in which individuals can get saved in. If we invite somebody to service, we may not can force them, but we should pray so that if we ever invite somebody to service, I don't care if it's a Bible study, if it's a Sunday school class, Sunday morning, sir, Wednesday night, Friday night, it doesn't matter. We should pray that every single time that we invite somebody to the house of God, they may not get saved, but they're going to be brought to the valley of decision. There's enough inspiration present. Amen. The Bible said, if two or three shall be gathered, I'm in the presence too. So if God is in the presence, amen, we want to make sure that every single service we come to, there's enough inspiration there for someone to get a breakthrough in. You say, Brother Lee, what if I'm not teaching on uh, uh, to get saved? Or I'm not teaching an evangelistic message or, or class that night. It doesn't matter as long as the presence of God is present. Amen. I was sitting in the service one time, Brother Hampton was teaching on modesty. At the end of the service, he called for an altar call. Soul came right over there and got saved. Brother was teaching on modesty, my God. I've seen Brother Peter on divine healing. Individual end up getting saved, amen. So it's not so much the topic as much as it is the inspiration. So number one, we want to make sure we have an atmosphere that individuals can get a breakthrough can get saved, keys to getting saved, we discussed that. And then we also want to have a congregation that individuals can get established. We do not want people, get saved and they're gone. Get saved, if they do, it's going to be on them. You should have been at Bible study. You should have been at morning service. You should have, my God, hit the altar when you were struggling. There was enough inspiration present. Here you went from service after service. You never went to an altar, then you're gone. That was on you then. You didn't seek the help that was available for you to have. But we want to create an atmosphere that an individual can actually come in and get grounded. And we're talking about being grounded. There's multiple aspects of that. That's not just grounded in their salvation. We want them to be grounded as a New Testament Church of God saint. To be able to perceive what it means. Why we don't fellowship bad. I mean, they, they actually get in and you sense them growing. There's enough gospel going forth that they understand why we don't wear this. We don't want, why don't we wear it? Stick around long enough. Stick around long enough. You're going to understand. Why don't we got mini skirts on where you can see all the people's thighs? And why don't we have uh, 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 shirts all low where you can see the, a woman's breasts? And you go, why don't y'all do it at church? Stick around long enough. Amen. The inspiration should be high enough that after a few weeks you start seeing those necklines come up. Amen. And those skirts getting longer. Thank the Lord. Amen. Why don't y'all tell off-sided jokes and, and half lie and say, this ain't, oh, I was just kidding. No, that's a lie. We don't play. We don't talk like that around the church of God. Come around long enough. All that slang talking, this, that, and the other. You saying words, not a curse word, but it's half curse word. Stick around long enough. Amen. All that foolishness, my God, is going to be gone by the wayside. Amen. So here we're talking about, A, keys to getting saved. 
Then two, we talked about the keys to staying safe. And tonight we want to explore the keys to being used of God. Go over to Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12, verse number one. We feel strongly within our hearts that God wants to use every single one. And that's a church on fire. Church on fire is when, my God, you see everybody in their place. Everybody got an assignment. Amen. Some are visible, some are not invisible. But some of the time, those that are less visible are just as powerful as those that are visible. Come on and read. Revelation 12, 1. There appeared a great wonder in heaven. There appeared a great wonder in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun. A woman clothed with the sun. And the moon under her feet. And the moon under her feet. And upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Uh -huh. And she being with child cried. Uh -huh. Travelling in birth. Yes. And pain to be delivered. Now mind you we're not going to go over this tonight. But just want you to know that the church of God started out with fire. Started out with great inspiration. Here you say, and we just touch a little bit of it. A woman is styled as a church because the church brings forth converts children so here there appeared a great wonder in heaven now we'll do a study on the heavens but just for real briefly here there are three heavens who can name them come on scholars amen to die what are the three heavens heavenly places in christ jesus amen master church heavenly but the stars they have absolutely they have god created the heavens and the heavens and the heaven where god is heaven is his throne earth is his foot absolutely so here just by a basic understanding, you can tell which one he's talking about. He said, there appeared a great wonder in heaven. All right? A woman clothed with the sun. So here, he's talking about the church. He said, a woman clothed with the sun, the inspiration of the New Testament, New Testament light, New Testament understanding, with the moon under her feet. The sun, the moon is just a reflection of the sun's light. The Old Testament was a type. And we can get into all of this. Jesus said, I didn't come to do away with the law, but to fulfill the law. So the moon under her feet and upon her head, a crown, 12 stars, the apostles, the ministry. Uh, it said, and she being with child, travailing in birth, pain to be delivered. Skip down to verse number five. And she brought forth a male child. Okay, so here it's talking about the church coming on the scene, the glory, standing firmly, the apostles. It says she being travailing in birth, she was about to bring forth. It says she brought forth a what? A man child. And she brought forth a man child. Come on. Who was to rule all nations uh -huh. with a rod of iron. Read. And her child was caught up until God. So here we see the inspiration that was present in the early morning. If you want to read about this man, you go over to Acts. And you read how these individuals who had only been with Jesus for three years. Who just got sanctified. Preaching a gospel. Thousands getting saved. Bodies being healed, dead raised. I mean, they going forth, glory, glory, going taking cities. There be no God made with hands. Some of the greatest things from a historical, earthly, natural, historical context, Athens and Greece. Uh, these unlearned men just came in with a gospel. They just took the world over. Go to Ephesians 5, verse 25. Oh Ephesians 5, verse 25. So we've seen the church of God came on the scene and took over. Ephesians 5, verse 25. Husbands, uh -huh. love your wives even as Christ also loved the church. Come on. And gave himself for it, mm -hmm. that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Come on. That he might present it to himself, a glorious church. That he might present it to himself. Talking about the second coming. <clears throat> a glorious church not having spot or not wrinkle spot or wrinkle or any such thing uh -huh. but that it should be holy and without blemish so here we got the church early morning starting out with glory great mountain burning with spot souls being saved bodies of people taking stand great coming out of Judaism paganism great glory great glory and he says I'm coming back <clears throat> 
for glory. Yes, sir. But in order for that to take place, it's going to have to take every single one of us operating at 100%. The mindset cannot be, this is sister so-and-so. That's brother so-and-so. You have a measure of glory in your midst. But the fullness of glory that God is coming back for is for brother Johnny to be at 100% of brother Johnny. Now, the reason why we don't compare ourselves to ourselves because God got something unique and different from brother, for brother Johnny than he had for brother Joel. Right. It's completely different for brother Range. Sister Tasha's is different than his. But... God is coming back for Brother Rain's being 100% of what he's to be. Brother Curtis being 100% of what he's to be. And Brother Frank being 100%. And Sister Betty being 100%. It cannot be. And we have a faulty mindset when we're looking at certain people to do everything. Like they're 100 percenters. I'm not there yet. Because I don't have this gifting or this calling. It don't matter what calling you got. Be 100% of whatever yours is. Let them be 100% and you be 100%. So our mindset in order to be prepared for that second coming is each one of us got to so abandon ourselves, get before God and say, Lord, here I am. Here I am. Feel me, Lord. I'll do whatever you want me to do. If you call me to be the mother, I'll be the greatest mother that I can be. If you call me to God to help out with the ushers, Lord, if you call me just to pray, I won't make a big deal. I'll pray, Lord. I'll get before God. Lord, if you want me to help sing, I'll sing. I'm, I'm not going to be a 20% choir member. I'm not going to be that. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to be a 45% to a Sunday school teacher. These children might have been taught all this foolishness, all this ungodliness. Well, I'm up there. I, I may not be as smart as sister so-and-so. I may not be as, as, as brilliant as brother so-and-so. But I'm going to give everything I got. And that's where the anointing comes in at. When God see you giving your all, he'll anoint you and you'll be more effective as somebody that might be more naturally gifted than you are. So here, in order for the church to be what the church is to be, it's going to take each one of us operating at our highest level. Now, it's often been difficult. Let's go over to Exodus 7, verse 16. Point number one is understanding that we are all called to serve. Point number one in the keys of being used of God is understanding that we are all called to serve. Some churches present a false presentation like there's certain people that do certain things. But we're going to show you through the word of God. If you're saved, you were called to serve. Amen. The capacities may be different, but every single one of us is called to serve. Exodus 7, verse 16. And thou shalt say unto him, The Lord God of the Hebrews hath sent me unto thee. And thou shalt say unto him, he's talking about Pharaoh. He's talking about Moses and Pharaoh here. Keep going. Saying, mm -hmm. let my people go. Let my people go. That they may serve me. That they may serve me in the wilderness now he's talking about out of Egypt they were in Egypt follow this go over to Exodus chapter 6 go back to chapter 6 read verse 6 before you read that he said let my people go that they may serve me he's talking about Pharaoh who was over Egypt and had the Israelites down there and they were in bondage. God raised up Moses to go to Pharaoh and say, let my people go that they may serve me. Now, you must understand types to perceive what's taking place here. Egypt is a type of bondage. It's actual bondage, which is a type of sin. Read 6, 6. Wherefore, say unto the children of Israel. Wherefore, say unto the children of Israel. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. And I will bring you up. I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will bring you out from under the burden of the Egyptians. And I will rid you 
out of their bondage. And I will rid you out of their bondage. And I will redeem Thank you. Thank God. God can bring us out the bondage of sin. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord. Amen. Come on and read, brother. And I will redeem you. And I will redeem you. Anybody need to be redeemed tonight? Amen. Thank God if you're in sin tonight, you came to the right place. Amen. Thank the Lord. You can be redeemed tonight. My God. Amen. Redeem. When a, per when a slave was in slavery and they were to be redeemed, somebody had to pay a price. You say, Brother Lee, who's going to pay that price? Friend, that price was already paid. That price was paid a long time ago on a hill far away. Stood an old rugged cross. Thank God Jesus already paid that price for you. Come on, read, Brother Frank. And I will redeem you with a stressed out arm uh -huh. and with great judgments. So here he talked about Egypt, burdens of sin, and I will rid you of your bondage. Sin is a type of, you may say, my God, I like smoking weed. You smoke it long enough, it's going to turn into a bondage. You, it's going to turn into a habit. It's going to turn into a hard taskmaster. Seeing people and seeing young ladies that we went to school with, now they're looking 25 years older than they really are. Why? Because sin will wear you out. Sin will beat you down. It might start off as fun, my God, but, but soon enough, my God, you're going to end up with a record. You going to end up can't get certain jobs. You're going to have to deal with this. Why? Because everywhere you go, they're going to pull you right. But the devil didn't tell you that when he was telling you how much fun he was going to show you. He didn't tell you how much fun. My God, now you got to deal with that baby. Two different, three different baby daddies. And you got to go over here. Now you got your check. You go work all week. You get your check. You go pick it up. It's, uh, you work. Your, your check should say $600. But you're leaving with $125. Why? Because you got nine different mom, baby mamas. But the devil didn't tell you. It just felt good sleeping around, didn't it? it it felt good, my God, playing those girls. It felt good, my God. But now you're paying for it, my God. But Egypt was a type of sin. Sin is a type of bondage, my God. Sin is bondage, amen. But God told Pharaoh, go tell them, let my people go, amen, that they may serve me. So when a person is called out of sin, they're not called, amen, to salvation so God can bless them with a nice house, so God can bless them with a fine brother, so God can bless them with a fine sister so God can bless them this that and the other no you're called out of sin because God got a work for you to do he said let them go that they may serve me too many people got it twisted too many people got it backwards every one of their prayers is Lord heal me Lord bless my children Lord do this when we gonna start praying Lord what do you got for me to do Lord how can you bless Lord strengthen me Lord put my roots down deep Lord how can I do more for you amen Amen. So here, let's let's look at go to um um uh, Exodus eight verse one. Watch how deep this is and how consistent this is. Come on and read that they may serve me. God always said that when He talked about pulling them out of Egypt. Read. And the Lord spake unto Moses. And the Lord spake unto Moses. Go unto Pharaoh. Go unto Pharaoh. And say unto him. He said unto him. Thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Let my people go. Let my people go. That they may serve but me. But he added that every time. That they may serve me. Go to verse 20, brother. Come on. And the Lord said unto Moses. Yes. Rise up early in the morning. Come on. And stand before Pharaoh. Yes. Lo, he cometh forth to the waters. Come on. And say unto him. Yes. Thus saith the Lord. Yes. Let my people go. And he stopped right there. That they may serve that me. That they may go over to verse number uh, 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 13. No, 9. 9-1. Nine, 9-1. One. Nine, one. Then the Lord said unto Moses. The next chapter. Read. Go in unto Pharaoh. Yes. And tell him. Yes. Thus said the Lord God of the Hebrews. Come on. Let my people go. And he stopped right there. That they may serve Skip me. Skip down to verse number 13. Come on and read. And the Lord said unto Moses. Come on. He's trying to drive home a point. This is not about you. This is not about y'all. This is a re and many people don't understand that and don't perceive it. And then they think that they're going to get saved. Come sit some bench and just ask God to do a bunch of things for them. That's not the design of it. That's not the way it works. It's not. He calls us out of sin. Why? Because he got something that he wants you to do. There's somebody that you can influence. There's some background and some things. Maybe you were, uh, you smoked for 40 years, but you get saved. Maybe he wants to save some other people that smoked for 40 or 10 years or 20. They may not have the faith, but when they 
hear your testimony and you're able to say, I thank God I smoked for 20 years, 40 years, but God, you may get someone saved that's brother so-and-so, he never smoked before. He can't do that, my God. You got a unique testimony. You got a unique background. All things work together. No matter what your background is, God is able to utilize that in his kingdom and for his glory. Amen. Verse number 13. 13, read. And the Lord said unto Moses, Come on. Rise up early in the morning. Yes. And stand before Pharaoh. Uh huh. And say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews. Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews. Let my people go. Let my people go. That they may serve me. So here you see, and you go to chapter 10, the same thing. God has a work for every single one of us to do. One of the things that I, I, I struggle with is if I see a young person who's in high school that's saved. That's an error, and that's a time. See, if we get it, if saints, if we don't get this, everybody will think, I gotta wait till I get old to be used. Or God don't use me, he'll use, but do you know how many times, where, where is Sister uh, Thompson, she here? Yes. Yeah, Sister Thomas. Do you know her husband took a, in high school, yeah. took a revelation church. Y'all think, oh, Brother Hampton was dynamic. He was so amazed. He took this city by no, 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 no. If you only knew that it was some of these young people who had people down at Rotary Playground lined up. He's at home praying. This, that, and the other. They got a whole group of young at the park. They're not down at the park just to play. But they're saying, everywhere I go, I'm looking for souls. They all through Jackson High School with Revelation, everything else. Souls coming in. They bring them to the house. Billy, uh, knew all these, all these uh, 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 star players, Tony Dunn at the altar praying. Sherry, his sister, all they just took Jackson by storm. It wasn't him. We can't have in our mind that you got to be 30 years old before you can be you. No. No. Why they were in school. Even the generation after that, David and all the, these young people was fire. They had all, a whole had a paper in which they committed scriptures to memory and they would challenge rough pay and they would challenge each other. Hey, do you know this one? Do you know this one? Did you know and just people seeing that fire just come out their eyes. They just taken, they took the, this whole row, just jam-packed young brother, just sitting there. Praise God, brother. We right here. They wouldn't even, if a soul was at the altar, they wouldn't even leave their seat. They wouldn't get up and walk out as after service. If a soul was still at the altar, they hit their knees and praying, break through, Lord, break through. That's just a soul so out of here. How am I going to get up on the air at the altar, go on the other side and high five talking about LeBron? No, I'm not. I'm staying right here. It was so much fire that if you was a young person, you came to church, you felt condemned because they had so much fire. Everybody. Everybody had a part to play. It didn't matter who you were. Even after that, my God, with Daryl, my recent, all them up to the high school, when it was a chair, th th these young people came in, they was bringing them in saved. Bring them in with fire. They were a, a no, 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 no. Why? Because during that era, while you're in teenage years, you're inquisitive. Yeah. You, you kind of, you're trying to search it. That's why you can have a teenage daughter, teenage son. I mean, they'll have purple hair. They'll have a, a, a mohawk one day. They'll, they'll think, I like girls. No, I don't. I like, the lady came in the other day. We was, we, my wife went away, and we were meeting some lady at the store, and she said, Oh, uh, my wife was letting know she had children. She was talking about her children. She said, yeah. She said, my daughter, I don't know. One day she wants to be an engineer. Next day she wants to be an architect. One day she like girls. Next day she like boys. Then she comes back. Just that air, they just don't know what. They don't know. They don't know. They, 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 they're, they're, they're just ripe. They're ripe for the gospel. They're just ripe, my God, to come hear the truth. They're ripe, my God, to come here. You can be delivered. My God, God got a word for you. God got, you may say this is too radical. They won't radical. Look at, look at what they listening to. Look what they, they don't want nothing vanilla. They want something that's going to change them. Something that's different, my God. They wearing all black with old, it's summertime. All black, they just want something. Thank God you want something different. Oh, thank God we got something for you, amen. So here is a mindset that God has something to do for every single person. We come home, you got the mothers they together praying. You had groups of unsaved. This one, this one, this one. They all got unsaved companions. They got their own prayer cell going. Praying for me. Everybody has something. Just everybody. It's no, everybody got some. It's nobody sitting in the bench. My God, you may not see it, but my, they would come with fire. They was doing some fire, my God. They calling for this, calling for that. The older saints, my God. They got their own thing going. 
fire, fire, fire. But it's a mindset that we got to have. And that is that God has something for every single one of us Amen. to do. Go over to Proverbs 11, verse 25. And when you do that, look how it impacts you. Proverbs 11, verse 25. The keys to being used of God. Number one, we must understand that God has something for me to do. He did not call me to sit the bench. He didn't call me to serve him. But he called me because he has something for me to do. He called them out of Egypt that they may serve him. Proverbs 11, verse 25. And no matter... Go ahead and read it. The liberal soul shall be made fat. The liberal soul shall be made fat. And he that waters shall he water also himself. The liberal soul shall be made fat. And he's saying that when you water, you're going to be well watered. When you give yourself, it really does something for you. It, you, you, you'll go over to pray for sister so-and-so. And y'all spend a few hours over there praying and laboring with her. You will leave there with something yourself. When you labor, it's something that happens. You go to, it does something for you. It's something, and when you don't know, you never spend any time interceding for others. You come to the service, you only got one cup. You just hoping, just hoping, just hoping. And many times those that come to a service with one cup, they're the ones that can tend to criticize. They're the ones that can say something like, you know what, it really wasn't that, it really wasn't no inspiration, it really wasn't, a, it really, uh, it, it really, it really. But it's amazing, when you come with two cups, it's amazing how you always leave with the cup that was empty filled up. Why? Because you came with a mindset, I'm coming to help this service, my God. I may not got the best voice, but once again we come to, I'm not sitting there with the book shut, sitting there looking around, ain't nobody even here yet. I don't really, I don't really notice all that, my God. Why? Because I'm I'm so in tune with the service, praise God. I'm coming with my cup. He that water it shall be well watered. Amen. So when you got the mindset, Brother Hampton said one time, he would say, I focus so much on other people's burdens that God take care of mine. Amen. He said, I all, rarely do I spend time on me. Just praying about my own. He said, no, no, no. He said, I spend so much time focusing on, and this is just a bit of inspiration and encouragement. There are some things that every single one of us need done. And I tell you and I inspire you, the more you do for God, the more he'll do for you. Okay, so number one is understanding that we are all called to serve, every single one of us. Look at number two, Matthew 9, 37. Matthew 9, 37. This may be as far as we can get. Matthew 9, 37. Keys to being used of God. God is coming back from glory, for glory. And in order for us as a congregation to reach the level of glory that he has for us, it's not going to be one or two or three people. It's going to be every single one of us doing all that we can. All right. Point number two is there is... A great work to be done. 937, go ahead and read it. Then saith he unto his disciples, uh -huh. The harvest truly is plenteous. The harvest truly is plenteous. But the laborers are few. The harvest truly is plenteous. But the laborers are few. He said there's a great work to be done. But who's going to do it? There's a great work. Like we just said, there's schools, all these children. Oh my God, oh my God. Neighborhoods, street meetings. There's older folks' homes and, and uh, uh, senior homes. And there are college campuses that need Bible studies right now. The labor. The labor. We need more prayer warriors that are just willing to take burdens. My God, and just pray them through. Just hold on to them. Just, I'm right there. They're actually writing down prayer requests. And they don't mark them. They just mark them off after they get answered. And they just keep them before God. The labor, the labor, the harvest truly is plenteous. Babbling just all around. My God, people are sick and tired of babbling, my God. The harvest truly is plenteous. Compromise all around. Sin is so wicked, everybody almost trying to get out. There's very few people I meet now that's like excited about sin. 
It's very few people I meet now that talk about, man, what's going on, man? We had it going to, oh, I can't wait to the post. Oh, I ain't heard that in years. <laughs> when I say you heard about Johnny, somebody talking about, man, the post. Man, they had so and so down at the post seat. No, whatever, right, thank you. Somebody just said, is it still open? That's because like, seeing is so low right now. Seeing is horrible right now. They want, if you ask the average Saint child and the average backslider, they would tell you, pray for me, man. Amen. Pray for the harvest. They're ready, saints. They're ready. Yes. They're ready. And God is saying the harvest truly is plenteous on so many different levels. We can cause even now, man, overseas, this, that, and the other. I just feel in my heart that God is preparing before he just disperse, just explode. He's just preparing, just preparing. It's just one thing after another. The harvest truly is plenteous. I don't even know if you've been noticing, my God. Look, turn around the average Sunday. It's people, I mean, it's people that come in and say, the harvest, the harvest truly is plenteous. There's a great work to be done. God right now is saying, whoa, let me take it a step further. There's some, in order for the harvest to bring forth, a seed had to have been planted. Because this congregation has been here for so long, there has been generations raised up here that seeds have been poured into. They're sitting out there waiting on us to come get them. There's some saints' children out there, amen, who had some seeds put in them in Sunday school. Seeds put in them, my God. Seeds put in them. They know the songs of Zion. They sat through the altar call. They've been in all of you guys' Sunday schools, amen. They're out there now, and God is saying, who going to go out there and get them? Who going to raise their sleeves up, give up a couple of moments tonight instead of laying down in your bed, my God. Get on your knees and pray. Lord, remember, sister, song. take the saints list and begin to pray, not just for the saints, but for every one of their unsaved children. Lord, bless them. The harvest is planted. They're ready right there for us to go get. They're ready right there for us. Take a few tracks, my God. The harvest is plentiful. They're down at that blood bank, my God, with family died. It was an old brother by the name of Brother Draw. He was in his 90s, my God. He would get a, 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 a thing of tracks in his pocket, my God, and go before serving. He'd come down early, maybe an hour or two early, and sit down there instead of rushing to the church of God to sit here among ourselves and pat each other on the back, widen by thousands of souls on their way to burning hell. He said, I might be 90, but I got a little gas left in the tank, my God. Amen. He would sit out there, amen, and he would have his tracks all in his hand, and he would go. Some people say, I don't want them. He said, Lord bless you, but next one to take it. He would sit there for hours. He may hand out 40 or 50 tracks. The harvest truly is plenteous. That's good. But the laborers, we got to ask God for a mindset to labor. We got to say, Lord, because if you don't ask him for this, then you won't be in, uh, uh, um, innovative. You won't, you won't even be thinking. I mean, you might can start posting. So I don't know. It's a way that you can labor. If you got a burden, my God, I'm going to get ahead of myself. But if you care enough, there's a way that you can labor. Some of us working at these places. People on their way to hell and babbling, playing games with religion, still sinning every day. How in the world can I work with you for a whole year and never one time I slide a soft sale? Wow. Seriously. But I'm going to march on and right, right by you on that great day of judgment. I'm going to march right by you while you go to hell and you turn around and look at me and you say, you never told me? Mm. What you is, who you're afraid? Well, I don't want to be offensive. Listen, I... I, I Lord, give me wisdom then so I don't got to be as offensive, but I care enough about your soul. I'm going to at least give you one. Amen. I'm going to at least give you I'm going to slide one into you. I, I got, I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, gonna give you, I'm, I'm praying that God, Lord, grant me an open door Amen. that I can share this gospel. Yeah, that's Our mindset has got to be, yeah. Lord, yeah. I understand I the harvest truly is plenteous. And I want you to help me to have the mindset that you can teach me what I need to do. That I can help you. You sitting back. Y'all my hands and feet. Seriously? Y'all my hands and feet. Do so. Y'all my hands and feet. Like I said, on Sunday, you sitting there, your mindset should be straight work, work mode. I mean, you sitting there in service, my God. When you singing a song, your mindset should be, this is part of the harvest. I'm not just going to be saying something, but I'm asking God to give me the spirit of what I'm saying and make one of them look at me. One time one of the uh, visitors came and they said, it's, uh, it was a sister up in the choir that I often looked at. And she just impacted. She wasn't demonstrative, just any other, but it was just a sincerity there. 
It was just a heartfeltness there. It was just some. Anytime I came, I would look at that sister in the choir. And she wasn't the best singer, no doubt, but wasn't the best this. But it was just something there. Many times young people can come and they can see another young person really into the service, sitting there, praise God, glory be to God. She's only 14 years old, but she's so sincere. That brings your auntie conviction because you're not on your Facebook during service, but you're really in tune with what's going on. You're doing your part. See, if you turn your heat up and you turn your heat up and you turn your heat up, pretty soon this atmosphere is a lot hotter. You can preach hard as you want to, my God. But if the atmosphere is not as hot as it could be, it's only going to have so much effect. But your mindset should be from the seat. I'm a laborer. That's what amens are about for real. That's what you, 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 you're adding your influence and your endorsement to what's being said. You're not passive. A church service is not a passive event. We all play a part. They appear singing a song. You're all looking at them like they do, like they off. How they supposed to sing? To you? Give them something. You got to labor with them. Bounce back off of them. Praise the Lord. Say, especially if somebody is stepping out to sing a special. They're out there all by themselves. My God, the saints, y'all can't give me nothing back. The sinners looking at me. I expect the saints, my God. One time I was preaching a funeral. Man, I got so encouraged. Why? Because it was about 95% of the audience was, was, was of the world. And I'm preaching my little heart out. This thing, man, after about a few minutes into the message, my God, I start hearing a few little, amen. And I know it was tough because they had, you know, red stripes on next to them and thug life next to them. And these little saints got some courage. And they said, amen. And they looking like, I said, how you think I feel, my God? I'm up here preaching the gospel, sending them all to hell. I need you to get out your comfort zone. Give me a little bit. I started feeling. I said, okay, now, nah, amen. It's only one church. Glory be to God. I'm like, oh, yeah. Why? Y'all gave me something, my God. So the mindset's got to be every single time, y'all, raising our children. We're laboring. We want to say, Lord, anoint me to raise them. I don't want to be so tight on them that I run them away. But I don't want to allow stuff that, 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 that I compromise. But, Lord, I want to give them a, 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 at least a fervent family devotion once in a while. Not just going through the motions, but let me just pray. Look, every, our mindset, everything we do, a mind of work. A mind, the harvest is plenty. This is our moment. This is the church's finest moment. And we're being blessed to have been poured into, prepared for this moment. Let's take it and let's run with it. God bless the saints. Amen. Thank you.